Today, we're going to work on a Mr. Christmas merry-go-round. The bottom just says Mr. Christmas. It says Holiday Around the Carousel by Mr. Christmas Mechanical Collectibles. Uh, this is from that big outdoor display, and it doesn't work anymore. I'm going to plug it in. Hopefully the camera picks up the noise that it makes. So, and here we go. I don't know if you heard that humming. You see, doesn't turn. And it's got a burned out light there in the back. Plays music. But you have to plug it in like three or four times to get it to do anything. And just by rotating it. So the music works. We're going to turn the music off. Switch is a little sticky. This is all the song controls. Christmas carols, year-round songs, off, low, high, push the rotate the songs. It's really hard to hear, but you can, it's really quiet. But there's a motor, sounds like it's turning inside, or trying to turn. And uh, I'm assuming, because it sits outside, probably the drive broke. Um, or the motor seized up. Also, we need to find out why it has a hard time starting. Starting the music, starting the turn, everything. So, we are going to open this up, see if we can get it to work, and try and make it more resistant to the elements since it is part of an outdoor display. Um, the access on this apparently is going to be from the bottom. Uh, first thing we're going to do is remove this, see what's underneath it. And if that doesn't release anything from the bottom, the screws that hold the feet on might. It is unplugged from the power outlet. Um, it's not unplugged from the side of the unit, of course. Alright. That screw is rusted and stripped. Slightly bigger screwdriver to grab a little bit more meat. Well, that little cover apparently just accesses some wires. Great. So next thing, let's uh, see what happens when we unscrew the feet. Now everybody's animated houses stuff they're all going to be different but they all have some similarity especially on something that spins they're going to have a gear drive or a, a belt drive what I'm doing is I'm trying to feel if there's any screw holes underneath here because it looks like yeah the rubber feet really don't do anything except they fit over these bosses so there's got to be a different way to access this. And the objects to access it without breaking it, of course. Yeah. Rotates pretty freely. This apparently is a rubber cap. 
all squishy. And it appears to be glued on. There might be a uh, bolt underneath there. So we're going to try and pry that off. If we're wrong, or if I'm wrong, um, just glue it back on. approach here. See if I can just cut some of the glue. And we have a screw. That's what I was thinking. Probably the end of the axle. That's probably why they use a rubber cap. You can see the glue residue. Probably just a form of super glue. Well, it definitely loosened it, but it's not coming out. So, power tool time. I believe there's a nut in the base and it's spinning. And of course there's no access on the bottom. So I'm assuming once this axle, which is what I'm sure they're using it as, is pulled out, this bottom ring will separate just to make sure it's not caught on the power, I'll unplug the power supply. Let's see. So. Okay, well, I'm going to play around with this for a little bit. Don't want to waste all your time. I'm going to see if I can get it apart without breaking it. See if there's some trick I'm not seeing. And then once I figure it out, I'll let you know. And we'll continue the tear down and repair. Okay, we're back. <laughs> that was kind of wrong. This axle screw does not go through to the bottom. It's actually under this top. And what I had to do is pop the little tabs that are here. There's four of them. Put a screwdriver in and wedge the spindle to get the screw out. Once I unscrewed the screw, which I haven't fully done so you can see, the top comes off. Now what I ended up doing was pop the tabs there and right there. There's four of them. Pried it open, used a light, Stuck this small screwdriver. Let's try not to beat the heck out of this. 
all the way in to get it inside the slot and then put pressure on the slot because all I was doing was spinning this. This rotor assembly with the two wires is uh, just to make connection for the four lights. Um, they're not LED, they're actually incandescent and since one of them's burned out we'll probably just change all these to LED and change the resistors to match or add another resistor in line. So, but you have one rail which is negative, one rail is positive. Um, these wires have to be removed from the rotor and this glue blob right there needs to be removed to get this nut to pull this out to get the top off so we can get the actual bottom off. This is the center axle that rotates. So all of this has to come off to get the base. So removing the glue. All the glue is for is to keep the nut from backing off as it's spinning. Glue feels like it's a type of super glue. It's not hot glue. It's very crunchy. So. Get a soldering iron out, something that works fast and gets real hot. <sighs> so I'm going to use an old Weller's Expert soldering gun. These take just uh, mere moments to get hot, as you can see by the smoke. Very good. I'm going to re wet the solder so that way it comes off easy. This is a trick because sometimes just heating up original solder uh, doesn't work. Voila. Just a matter of seconds and it's done. Now these two wires are going to have to be pushed inside the shaft a little bit to get this nut off. Um, this part would be really hard if you did not have a soldering iron. I'm not going to lie. all the glue out of the threads so we'll just use the nut to clean them and yeah, probably be easier if I went and got a wrench but this is what I have with me at the moment use something slightly bigger the nut. Here's the spindle for the rotor. One of the springs came off. Slide it back on so we don't lose it. That's what it looks like. Set it to the side. And then Here's how it works. The gear box down here spins an inner track gear here. This is, you can see it's tape, it's raised and lowered, which these then go on, which cause them the things to go up and down. So, very simplistic, uh, very reliable, and the grease is a little sticky. We're probably going to clean all this out and, you know, re lubricate it. Uh, especially since it's part of an outdoor display. All right. I'm going to plug the power back into this guy. 
so we can see it again. see it but the belt snapped but now the problem is the motor's not turning I think this motor's going probably the elements have gotten to it uh, to get this part off uh, looks like you have to remove all these little screws around the outside edge It looks like there's five. And there's the broken belt. if this pulley turns. She is turning. Hopefully you can hear that. Still spins nicely. Circuit board doesn't look too bad, considering it's always in the elements. There's really no corrosion. So the only thing wrong with this is we lost the drive belt and we lost uh, one light, which are going to be nice and upgrade the lighting on this to LED. Uh, a little bit brighter, not that it needs to be overly bright, but longer lasting. Uh, the little bulbs in the top are notorious for popping after a few thousand hours of use or if they're in the elements. So. I am going to try and locate something that is similar to this band. And then to change it, I need to take the two screws out on either end of this plate, which holds this drive gear, and then feed it on. So, be back uh, as soon as I can locate something that's going to work. Alright. Went through all my belts or bands. I don't have one that's the same diameter. If it's too tight or it won't turn, too much resistance, too loose, and it slips. Um, did some research and found that this is the same diameter as an average heavy-ish rubber band. <laughs> but I did go ahead and test it. I got a rubber band on here. And it's turning. You can probably see the is rotating there but when I unscrewed this we noticed that uh, there's a slight issue with the retainer uh, it's cracked so I am going to first get some of the debris out of the crack there we go I'm going to uh, clean this out I get a small piece of sandpaper clean out the inside of the crack I'm going to spread it and then I want to fill it with some, I'm going to use Gorilla Glue, and I'm going to clamp it for a little bit and try and fix this for now. Um, not like it's a piece you can just go to the store and buy. But I wanted you all to see that a standard rubber band, like what might come on a newspaper, uh, works. It's the same diameter and thickness as this black one. That black one's just really hard since it's so old. So, I'm going to go clean this up, clamp it, glue it, let it sit for a few minutes, and then we're going to reassemble the base, make sure that when we put the top back on, it turns, and if it turns with the rubber band, uh, we're going to then change the lights in this. So, or at least we're going to try to. That's the goal. Get this thing up and running since Christmas is right around the corner. So, 
shall return once this is repaired. All right, we're back. I went ahead and clamped it in a vise. I have a vise attached to my workbench. To prevent the glue from sticking to the vise, I just stuck it on a piece of paper. But I cleaned out the crack, filled it with glue, and then I glued the brass bushing in as well to help reinforce uh, the glue joint. Uh, again, the paper was just there to keep it from sticking to the jaws of my vise. <laughs> I'd rather not have it do that. So, we're going to go ahead and screw this back on. Make sure it doesn't flex, which it doesn't currently. Since, you know, Gorilla Glue. Then we're going to double check to make sure everything works like it's supposed to. I'm going to set this assembly down, slide the top on just to make sure it spins. I'm not going to screw it down until I ensure everything works. spinning. Sounds good. Try and line this thing back up the way it's supposed to go in. is lock in the place. There we go. Look at that. Of course none of the lights work because we have no connection here. Let it spin for a minute, make sure it doesn't bind or break, and then uh, we're going to work on the lighting. So, just wanted you to see how I glued it, fix it. Also, before I reassemble it, I'm going to put a little uh, hydrophobic grease, probably a silicone based grease, on that track since this is going to be outdoors again this year. But it looks like what's happening is because it sits outside for six weeks, um, sometimes eight weeks, depending on when he sets up the display, uh, just the band can't handle the outside elements. So um, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit on the inside before we reassemble and change the lights. So you don't need to watch me wipe everything down or re-grease it, but that's the next step. I'll be back in just a few to... Swap out the four lights, make sure they work with that rotor, and then reassemble it and get it back to its owner. All right, back together. Now what we need to do is figure out to turn these into LEDs, what the power is and how much resistance we need to add. So, uh, about 7.5, 7.6 volts coming out. This side's hot, which this inner track is the hot, the outer track is the ground or negative. 
it's important for LEDs. They're not, um, you can't reverse polarity on them. So, these resistors are 10 ohm resistors. If I put an LED in line with that, they will pop the LEDs. It's not enough resistance. Um, these are the LEDs that I'm going to use. They're 3 millimeter LEDs. And it's really bright on the camera, but one's bright white, one's not. So that's the bright white. And this is the warm white. You can tell it's a little bit golden in color. Well, this one is really white. Uh, I'm going to use the, the golden ones or the warm whites. They'll look better. And they'll be closer to what's actually in here. So, I got four of them. Fingers all dirty from the grease. What we're going to do is the resistance that's required to take the 7.7 .7 volts that's coming in and drop the current across the lights is about 230 ohms. Well, there's already four 10 ohm resistors in there, so we're just going to add a 220 ohm in line. You can see it says 220R. 220 ohm resistor to make it to 230. Uh, ohm's law you can learn but you can also go online and just look up uh, resistor calculator, ohm's law calculator and it'll tell you you'll have to enter information of course but it'll tell you what you need to uh, use if you don't know how to do it yourself. Uh, these lights have a 3 volt forward current to turn them on. So this is seven and a half, seven point six. We need to drop it down to that three. So we are going to <clears throat> solder a resistor into each one of these and then take all these out and replace them with these. Okay, kind of breaking up the glue to get the light and get rid of some of the brittle, the brittle rubber. Probably put a dab of glue on them to hold them in place since the rubber is breaking down from age and again being outdoors. But, I don't know if you can tell, once I get some of this, it's silver. That's the bulb should be clear. They're silver because they're getting hot and they're they're burning out. Um, these little bulbs can handle up to 12 volts. So running them at the seven and a half that's coming into them gives them a little bit dimmer color, a little softer. That's why we're going to use the warm white LEDs to kind of imitate that. So, what we're going to do is uh, get the lights off, got them all out, uh, try and separate the rubber like I was doing, there we go. I'm going to show you on one, and then uh, I'm going to do the other ones off camera so you don't have to watch the same process over and over and over again. First thing I'm going to do is uh, strip off a little the insulation. I know the inner track is going to be positive, but I don't have the rotor on it to send me power. So what I'm going to do get out the meter again and put it on ohms. Ohms usually give you a resistance 
So like if I do that, it tells you it's a 219 to 220. There's always plus or minus 1% on these. Some of them are 5%. What I want to do is figure out which one of these is hot. How to do that is on ohms. It's looking for continuity. Apparently that's the hot one. Oh, looks like they both might have a little bleed through. Hmm. No, that's interesting. Ah, never mind. I know why it's doing that. Each one of the filaments of these light bulbs is picking up as a connection to ground. So, that was uh, my mistake of getting a little overzealous. So, to solve that problem, besides the one with the higher resistance is the ground, I'm going to remove each bulb from the circuit. Yeah, that was a problem. So, I'm touching the one. This one's not attached. If I touch the outer rail, it says open line or infinite resistance. Touch the inner rail, and you can see I have continuity. It's bouncing because I'm not getting the best connection. If I go this way and touch the inner rail, I get nothing. I touch the outer rail, I get something. So, this one is hot. On an LED, there are two leads. One's long and one's shorter. The longer one is hot, the shorter one is not. It's the negative. Plug back in the soldering iron and get some solder. should have marked the two. Usually I put a red dot on the, the hot one. Alright, so this one's hot. Tinning the leads. Without breaking everything. I'm also tinning the the lead on the 
LED. I'm going to put the, oops, I'm pull it back before it cooled. I'm going to put the resistor on the negative. Since the 10 ohm is already on the positive, it's already factory from uh, the manufacturer. Yeah, I'm going to trim off a little bit of the resistor leads. I don't need them so long. Turn off the meter so I don't kill the battery. Same thing. I'm going to quickly tin them. probably thinking um, you're gonna leave these bare wires exposed on the ends. No, once I'm done I'm gonna coat everything in liquid electrical tape. So, Shift the I would use normal heat shrink except that doing so I have um, the issue of them dry rotting because it's going to be in the elements. Electrical liquid electrical tape has a little bit better longevity outside. Here's the first one. What we're going to do to test it before we turn it on apparently I'm going to have to push these back inside again. Um, if you do push them inside be careful because uh, <laughs> I pushed them too far in and it was kind of a pain to get it out. I had to use a fine point needle nose or uh, tweezers to pull the wires back through the holes. So. Kind of like I'm going to have to use the push them back in. Probably helps if I put it back together in the correct order. Getting overzealous.
might work better now. I'll actually put the the rotor on <laughs> first. All right, one last check to see which one is hot coming out of the unit. We'll solder it and that light should turn on. All right, because it says negative on there, that means that this one is actually the ground since this is the hot lead. So, then the ground is the inner track. Trust me, the outer track. So we've got to reverse sides. Now we'll solder it. Nice amount of smoke. There we go. Apparently that's not working right. <laughs> I probably screwed that up a little bit. Let's find out. Yep. Easily fixed. Apparently I did not uh, add them backwards. Just always double check your work on proof. See? Everybody makes mistakes. And I just made one. Easy to fix. Ouch. That was hot. Don't touch it. It's hot.
Try not to breathe the fumes. Apparently I turned on a flashlight over there when I did that. There we go. Apparently the rotor, a little skippy there. There we go. So that is what it does. So now just need to solder the other three, stick them through, and test it out. But uh, the flicker isn't the light, it's actually the rotor, the connection on the rotor. So um, I'll probably uh, clean up the rotor a little bit too, try and get a better connection. So when we come back, it should be uh, all assembled. Just remember to check your polarity, since apparently I, I screwed it up by forgetting which one was the which again. Uh, normally, like I said, I have a red marker or a black marker to mark them, but uh, it's not within reach at the moment. So, all right, I'm going to solder the rest and shall return. Okay, uh, they are liquid electrical taped, and I re-hot glued the wires down, and I put some hot glue around the light since the rubber boots are tearing because of their age. And I wanted you all to see, once I find the switch here, You can see the lights are all on, all four. So, so to complete it, we're going to put the top back on. And what we're going to do is uh, got to line the tabs up. There's a tab here and a tab here. So, Four tabs. There we go. I'm gonna drop the washer in and the screw. I'm hoping it'll screw without me having to pry it open and wedge it. Oops. Oops if I grab the right screwdriver. so good. Hey, look at that. <clears throat> there we go. And of course I just had it. Ah, there it is. We're going to glue that back on. Um, we're not going to use the hot glue because this is going to be outside. And even in our winters here in Arizona, uh, we can hit temperatures in uh, November exceeding 100. It has happened. I've had a couple of years on Thanksgiving where it's, it's over 100 degrees. So I'm not going to put a very thick layer. And I'm not going to put on both sides. I'm just going to do a thin layer so that way if it ever has to be taken apart again, I can be pried back up. So, turn off a little light. And there we go. I'll turn off another light. Make it a little darker in here so you can see it better. does still flicker even though I tried cleaning up the tracks but um, there you go four lights spinning and there's the music in July. Hopefully this is a... Uh, let's turn it down a little. Hopefully this will help you fix your merry-go-round. 
whether it be a Mr. Christmas or not. And, woohoo, look at that. Apparently there's a certain angle where those springs don't make contact. Because you can see it's pretty even now. Uh, hopefully this helps. And if you have any questions and comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching.